Hey, listen up. We got another episode of Wise Cracks. Featuring the crack man himself, Bill Krakenberger. And our co-host, John Orlando. Straight from Las Vegas. Wise Cracks is your ticket inside the world of sports betting. With tips, picks, special guests, and more. Only on WSN.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the final Wisecracks episode of the year, and we're going to close it out in epic style. Of course, we have Bill Krakenberger still on the East Coast while I lock it down here in Vegas. And our surprise, what's well, not a surprise, we teased it last week. We've got Josh Reddick is in the house. There he is. Boom. Fellas, how we hey, doing? Josh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again. So, Josh, we dedicated this whole episode to you. Normally, we would have like different segments where we like we do a little bunch of uh, you know banter up front, then the guest, then banter at the end, and we were like, no, we want Reddick on the whole time with us. <laughs> <laughs> the full experience. Yes. Absolutely. So, before we started rolling, Bill had asked you where uh, where you were, and you said home, and I said, oh, Georgia, and you said, no, I didn't realize you're full time Houston. Yeah. So. A little bit of a story there. Uh, when I when I right when I agreed to play here in 2017, um, I came here and looked around for some houses to, you know, just to, I was going to purchase a home right away, just so I could feel comfortable and you know not have a rental property to go back home to every night. And getting out of Georgia got me away from the sales tax, as we all know how Texas works, along with Florida and Arizona of no income tax. So um, we're just trying to make the most of the paycheck I could, but also have a place that I could call home to be able to go to. And then my wife and I got together and found this piece of property where we live now with 50 acres and we're surrounded by trees and fence and it's pretty perfect. So here we are in, in our great home that we both love and have plenty of property to be private. I'm sorry. Yeah. It sounded like you said 50 acres, like five zero that I must've heard that five wrong. Zero. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What that nice. go for in your area, John? Oh cool. my God. <laughs> Bill, can you even buy 50 acres in Vegas? You can't do it. And in LA, no, forget it. There's no such it. thing as yeah. 50 acres. No. So you don't really, that's, really, it's not property you have, Josh. You have a compound. We call that a compound. Yep, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> you can't even see the How house from the road. It's perfect. Oh, that's great. How old are your kids? How old are your children? Just turned two in October. Well, that's oh, right. You okay. have twins, right? Tw twin boys, yep. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. They're going to. They're going to have a good time there when they get a little bit older. <laughs> they're, they, yeah, they're aliens right now. But golly. Yeah, they, they've already got a pr pretty magical ground area and their own building to play in. They're building, I got half my, half of it's my cage. And then the other half is pretty much their, their indoor play area. So we kind of share that property. But yeah, there's no telling what my wife's going to have me do or get for them to uh, enjoy every bit of their life. But that's what we're here for. So I have no complaints. And you, you get to spend Christmas with the kids. It's great. A lot of people in different professional uh, sports do not get to spend Christmas with their kids. So you, I'm sure you're, uh, you're happy about that. And uh, maybe you want to show everybody your, uh, your nice sweater there. Uh, nice sweater. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Of course, <laughs> happy to spend you know, Christmas with my family as yeah. always. But yeah, I've got an arsenal of great <laughs> Christmas sweaters here. Game deer. <laughs> but I feel, like, I feel like that was appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, it's great. No, but it's great to be home for Christmas time with the kids. <laughs> uh, we've we've had on some other some some other uh, sports figures that that couldn't do that throughout their career. So it's nice to get to share that with them and your family. And uh, but the weather there, you're probably even though John and I, you can see we're bundled up. I have a coat. I'm in Atlantic City, New Jersey, right now. Uh, even though I live in Las Vegas, John we, John lives in Las Vegas, and for some reason he's bundled up in I, a hat. I overreact <laughs> to the elements. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. When it's but like, even, but even Josh, Josh had the hat on and the sweater. It, it, I guess it's all across the country. It's just the the spirit of uh, Christmas and being cold. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, here in Texas, it's been pretty weird the last three days. It was about I think the high was maybe fifty, so it was pretty cold for us. Oh wow. So yeah, and, oh, and you wow. know, today we walk outside and you know we took our kids to a little interactive aquarium, and I was in gym shorts and a t a t-shirt. So Christmas is scheduled for an eighty-five degree sunny day here in, in my in my area. So we'll, oh, we'll wow. be in our shorts. <laughs> we'll be in our shorts. So okay. Josh, obviously you'll play Santa now to the boys uh, every year, but uh, I feel like I've seen you play Santa for yourself, and I was wondering if you still have. 
uh, the toys that I like. Like at one point, I remember it's. I think you bought a Lamborghini. I want to say, do you still have a Lamborghini, or do you get rid of that when you get the kids? How does it work? Oh no, she's still out there. I can. I'll send you a picture of it right now on your phone. Yeah. I love it. And and uh, you also had a pretty sweet Range Rover. Do you still have that, too? That, that one got traded in for the, the mom car. Got it. Okay. So there is a mom car. Okay. I miss, that, I, miss that, I miss that car every day. But, yeah, we traded that in as soon as we, we got pregnant. Um, we, we upgraded to the Escalade, the extended boy. Okay. So we, we got the big Escalade. So your daily car that you, you're in is the Lambo? Oh, my God. Look at this thing. Travis, I'm going to send this to you right now. <laughs> And maybe you can put it up. Um, wow, I'm jealous. You no, know, my 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 everyday vehicle would be I got a 2017 F250 Platinum diesel. Okay. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, but no, we, that's that's the car we take everywhere if we're going with the boys. But if I'm going to the field to work out or something, and I'll hop in my truck. Or if it's a sunshine day, then we're taking the uh, the Lambo for sure. I love it. Did you get that job? Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Give me a yeah. second. And yeah. uh, very up, festive. Um, his uh, well, I'll I'll let Travis put it up. I won't ruin what it looks like. But um, have you seen with that? I'll I'll give a little spoiler. Have you seen the new Spider-Man movie yet? I have not, and I don't want a spoiler, so don't give me anything. No, no, I I just meant what your car looks like. Um, yeah, I oh, yeah. Uh, I I saw um, I snuck into a, a screening of it the other day, and I only saw an hour, and I had to go. But it was really good. Like that kid's the best Spider-Man ever. Crack, do you go to movies? Crack, when's the last time you went to a movie in a movie theater? I went to the Titanic in '97. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, I. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've I've been my wife you know, since high school, so we've been together 37, 30. It's gonna go on going on 37 years. Um, I don't think we've went to a movie in 20 some years. We Come watched on. home together. Yeah, we watch stuff home together, though. We haven't caught up. Listen, I, I, I am in a workforce where even though I have my own business, I, I, I literally work lots of hours, 70, 80 hours a week. So it's not something that uh, vacation times and stuff we have. And, and, uh, but I, I miss going to movie theaters. I, I used to like doing it. So do you guys go? I know, John, you said you go. Christmas Day? Is that, is that Dude, something you said you do? I used to demand three movies a day on Christmas Day. I'd make my oh, mom wow. go to at least one. Uh, wow. But uh, usually I was good for three movies wow. on Christmas Day. Then we cut it down to two, and now we're at one. Josh, what about you? Do you go to the, do you and the missus? Well, got to be a little tougher now with the kids, but did you go we, to movies before that? or? We did, yeah. We we still we've gone a couple of times with the boys. Um, we went this past oh, summer good. when we went this past summer when we were at the D backs and um, we had an off day and two other families that had kids. We all just rented. We rented out the whole theater. Oh, so, nice. like eight of our kids could run around and not have to worry about it. And that right. was fantastic. But no, the wife and I used to go to a place here local where where our old place was that was. You know, the all included, you sit there, you plop out the little dinner table and you order your food, you can order alcohol from your seat, you don't have to move. Oh, that's we used, unbelievable. To, we used to do date wow. nights like that all the time. That's how we, we watched Endgame. That's how we watched, you know, a lot, a lot of movies. We, we went a lot. We, we included that in our date night a lot. Is Spider Man one of your favorite movies, Josh? I'm, I would assume, or the, that character based on the car. There's the car. I mean, look at that. Yeah, my, my wife got me that for my, that rap for Christmas two years ago. Wow, I love so it. So sick. It. People must um, stop you like crazy. Oh, it's I've I've almost witnessed probably over twenty wrecks from people pulling out their phones <laughs> and not paying attention, like just wow, not paying them paying attention at all. And it's scary, but yeah, they 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 freak out. It's pretty cool when you when you're going by and, and seeing that. But Spider Man's always been my character, and I don't really you know in my top five. I honestly can't really say that a Spider-Man movie is in my top five. Oh, wow. Really? Of all wow. time. I mean, if we're talking of all time. Where is Iron Man, the first like, Iron Man? Is that in your top 20 of all time? Um, I'd put that in the top 15. Okay. Top 15, yeah. That's why we're friends. Well, give us the top five. Yeah. So what's what's not Josh Reddick's top five? Not, not in any order, by the way. Yeah. Okay, okay. As long as I, cause I never can figure out a number one. It's it's right. really hard. Um, I re Man. It's so tough, right? Man, it, it, it is. There's so is many Shawshank Redemption on your top five? 
No. Oh my God, you hurt me just now. How about hurt. like great? How about great old movies? school like Jaws, Rocky? That's you know that kind of stuff, or not really? Yeah, I mean it's it's it's. I'm trying to think. You know, I think A League of Their Own is top five for me. Really? Good movie, great. I'm, yeah, I'm a, really I'm, good that's, movie. That's that's that's. My, I think in in my opinion, it's probably my top two baseball movie of all time. Number one being um, Bull Durham. No, yep. probably. Let's see. Oh, Bull Durham. Okay. You were going to say uh, the, natural? the natural, maybe like the the natural. I always put like the old school, the natural in there. You know, the sand the Sandlot's number three. Sandlot. Field of Dreams. Yeah, number four. Major League's number four. Yep. Field of Dreams. And I, I'm not. You know, I'm not. Oh my God! I was never big on Field of Dreams. Oh my I God! Get so hard. I get judged so hard for it. I know. I get judged so hard for it. Um. That's not my top twenty-five either, though. I like eight. What about Eight Men Out? That was pretty good. Underrated. Old school. Old school. Remember, remember, rookie of the year with the he little breaks kid. his arm. Really? Wait, Den- cool Dennis guy. Quaid. Gardner. Wait, who's in that? Rowan Gardner. Big, no, you're thinking that's the rookie. This is rookie of the year where the kid breaks his arm. Oh, the kid. He comes yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cubs because they suck. That was good. He throws like. Phew. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Daniel Stern, Gary Busey. Yeah. Gary Busey's in it, yeah. Is Casino yeah. in your top 15 of all time? Yes. Okay. Oh, We're good. Back on so track. you like 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 good good fellows, casino, you like that? I, I'm all over stuff. the place, yeah. It's not, right. it's oh, not just sports movies for me. It's all over the place. I mean cool. The notebook. I, I mean the, the notebook <laughs> is top fifteen, I'm not gonna lie. Oh <laughs> it's a great wow. movie. See, he knows how to please the wife. He knows what to say. She she loves oh. He she knows what it, to so. say. It's it's a good movie anyway. So it's not a bad <laughs> well, one. since we're on the subject though, how about Christmas movies? There Ooh, has Christmas to be some movies. Christmas movies you have to see every year, or that you'll want Home alone. Your children to see. Home, Home alone. alone, great movie. Okay, tell me um, this, Josh Reddick, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, the other thing, we mentioned my next one. Yeah, we we mentioned uh, a whole bunch of them, and Home Alone was one of them. This was a couple weeks ago. Uh, what else do we have in there? A Christmas story. The kid sticks his. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> shoot Christmas story is classic. Um, uh, your kids story. remind me of 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 uh, a Christmas story, Glasses. right? Glasses. Yep. You posted a pic the other day, and I was like, "Oh my God, he looks like little Peter Billingsley back in the day." We got, we, we've got people that stop us all the time and tell us the exact same thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. looks just like him. Yeah, looks just like him. Yeah. Um, what was the? I had a Christmas. I had another movie. Um. Oh, the Santa Claus, Tim Allen. The Santa Claus, Tim yeah. Allen. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, um, great. I'm one. not a big fan great. of this one, but everybody loves Elf. Elf. I'm not a big fan of that one either. I'm not even I'm, a big fan a Will, of Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Will Ferrell. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry about that, Will. Yeah. Um, Mm-mm. Yeah, but uh, I like the old school stuff too. It's like the old "It's a Wonderful Life," the old uh, "Miracle on 34th Street," the stuff that you know. There's some cool old stuff. I love yeah. throwback stuff. So, did we think we'd be talking old school Christmas movies with Josh Reddick? I love it. <laughs> Absolutely not. We did not. Nobody right? thought that. <laughs> well, let's talk. The shirt a- brought it out. Yeah. The, shirt brought it, the sweater. <laughs> let's talk a little about the obvious that you would talk about with Josh Reddick. Um, so, Josh, what I found fascinating was that you were just in the Dominican Republic playing winter ball. Uh, you know, hoping to showcase that you can still, uh, there's still gas in the tank. And you posted something that just blew me away. I mean, like, you know, uh, assuming it's accurate, you know, like when we Google like you on baseball reference, whatever, and it says, you know, career earnings, you're, you're like right around 60 million career earnings. Uh, I know you, I know you're good with the money. So you don't need the money to play baseball, yet you went down to the Dominican, you took a bus ride four hours to the like opposite side of where you were staying to play a three-hour baseball game and then take a four-hour bus ride back. If that doesn't show how committed you are to the game wow. and your love of the game, I give up. I don't know what does. I mean, what was that experience like uh, for you? Tough, to be honest. Um, I definitely, like you said, I went down there to play. That was the main goal to get down there to play. And for the for the majority of the part, I didn't play. I think I was on, I was down there for three and a half weeks, and I played in five five games. Oh, really? 
Oh yeah, it was it was it was a tough experience. The first, which I get, you know, at the beginning, I hadn't been facing live pitching for over a month, and I get that. You know, don't throw me right in the games right away. That make that makes sense. Let me face some pitching in practice and build up to be ready for the game. But that usually only takes about five days, six days max. Well, two and a half weeks rolled by and I haven't played in the game yet. And I was under the impression when I signed that I was going to be playing every day. So no communication whatsoever. Just, just a tough experience all around to where it didn't work out in my favor. And, um, and I caught it early. I just, it was, it was, you know, kind of a way, it was really a waste of my time because my family was down there and, Every other day, you know, we were traveling and I was gone for more than 12 hours a day, every day from doing all this stuff. So they were, my wife was stuck at home, my kids by herself with nothing really to do and hang out in the house with minimal enjoyment of toys. So it was, it was a tough experience and it just wasn't, wasn't the best situation for anybody down there. Wow, man, I'm sorry to hear that. That's brutal. That's that's a crazy thing. I would think it's automatic. Uh, anyone from the MLB down there would be starting every day. Like it seems yep. like the obvious move to make, right? It's usually how it works. Yes, I don't know. I can never get an answer as to why I wasn't playing. I asked plenty of people around who had plenty of pool from top to bottom, from coaches to managers to general managers to whoever you wanted to talk to. And I just couldn't ever, I could never get a straight answer. So I just, I wasn't there to just be there and take batting practice and sit on the bench for three and a half hours. So. Wow. And so with the lockout now, does that affect what your strategy would be moving forward? Like I see some guys are signing in Korea and Japan. Like, is that something you would consider doing or uh, what, what, what is your plan now? 100%. I, I would definitely take something over there right now. Um, you know, because like you said, the goal is to just keep playing. But, but right now, there's not really any, any interest in that for, for them and, my, and myself. So we just sit back and I just keep training and doing everything I can here to stay ready for whenever something happens and hopefully something happens. But, you know, the, I think the lockout's definitely going to slow things down because they can't sign those guys. So they're not going to worry about anybody else at this point. So my plan is to sit back and I've actually for once in my life it's almost 35 changed my diet <laughs> I want to start watching what I eat and um, I'm going to try to gain some weight and get to about 205 210 and come back and just swing out of my ass for the fence because that's what everybody's trying to do now anyway and that's apparently all they want Bill one of the reasons why I really wanted to have Josh on was to talk about this part of of the baseball career, you know, like everyone it's when you're, when you're a rookie and you're coming up and you got all that hype behind you and it's new, you know, it's exciting. And then you have your peak years as a player, but when guys, you know, I've been friends with Chris Benson for a long time and I watched him go from the beginning to the end and same thing with Coco. And now, you know, Josh is at that point where he's, you know, he's a veteran player. He's got the experience in the postseason, and everything he wants to play. It's his, his heart is in it. And it, it's, I don't think people talk about this part enough of like what that's like emotionally for guys, right? Like as you get down the, in the later years of your career uh, and, and what it's like, you know, being like, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear. Don't you think Bill? I'll tell you, this brings back, Josh just said something at the end of his, uh, when he was speaking there, what did Ozzie Smith, we had Ozzy Smith on this, uh, on this show, Josh, and Ozzy said something that you just said the swinging for the fences. He said, yeah, that's not what we did. We were nope. worrying about getting singles, get moving base runners, uh, sacrificing. And Ozzy told us that, uh, you know, and he was very, very to the point about the baseball fundamentals compared to now. So yep. uh, it, it was a different game. You just said it. Remember him telling us that, John? I do. I do. I forgot about it. To you just you just brought that up, yeah. but it's such a good point. How much the game has changed with the shift and everything. You know, uh, it's it's really interesting. And that's just in the last five years. This has happened, right? It's it's yep. not it's not been going. Five, you go five back five years ago in 2016, and your shifts are minimal. There's no analytics in baseball, and you know, like you said, it was get on base, get on base, then try to hit the three run homer. If you don't do that, then you drive a minimum with a two run double. Like it didn't matter. You yeah. beat the shift. It didn't matter if they hit it out of the park or 12 inches over the guy's glove on the infield. As long as you got the runs in, that's all that matters. 
Well, and it's so different now. We're, uh, we're we're hoping that someone realizes that about you. So you have a lot of good work that work ethic. Um, I know uh, you were down, like you said, you were down. You were in the Dominican Republic, going to different places in the Dominican Republic. Is that what you when you when you went yeah. away for twelve hours a day? You were going to different ballparks, correct? Yeah. So there's six teams, and I believe it's four ballparks because two teams share one. Okay. And our father, there's two trips that were like four hours. And then two other two other trips were like forty five minutes to an hour, so wow. you go wow. you go like home and then you go to the road or like with a short trip and you have it's a tough down game. there. I was I, I've been down. It there. is it's tough down there. The language barrier, the food, the uh, I just don't feel safe when I'm down there. Uh, I won't go again. I went down to to uh, I think it was Punta Cana. I think that's, that's the name of it. I've been there yep. like three times at the Hard Rock and and for tournaments and stuff. And it's just not my favorite. Not in my the drive from the airport to the casinos, 30, 40 minutes, people get robbed. There's the crime yep. rampant. Uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this island, I guess it's an island that's connected to Haiti. Um, it's just, it's just very unsafe. So uh, I'm glad you got back safe when your family was there. Boy, I tell we you, were, good for we you. Were, you we we, we were lucky. The team we were with, we were lucky because everybody tells me around that league that where they put us up, we're in a big old gated resort community. So where we were staying was, Safe. I'm not, I, I will say that because we had we had our own beach access and there had pools down by the beach, so it was great. We could take our kids down there on the days where I wasn't gone for the 15 hours a day. We could go right. down to the pool in the morning and play with them, and then you know I'd have to leave it right around one o'clock, so three or gotcha. two, two gotcha. o'clock. So. I interrupted you, John. Go ahead. No, I was just wondering. It's like so Josh. It's just fascinating to me. Like you've made the money. You've got a World Series ring. You've you've you know you you've played at such an elite level for so long. Why do you still want to play? Is it is it you still have more to prove to yourself, or just you just love the game? You just love the game. I just want to play, man. That's all it. That's that's. I love this game, and I know that you know once once I'm done, that's it. It's over. You know, when you get to that certain age where you just can't do it anymore, you know, you just got to realize that at some point and. I don't think it's that point yet. I, I'm right. fortunate to not be hurt a lot in my career, knock on wood. But I feel like my body is getting stronger as it ages, if that makes any sense. I've been, you know, I have less pains and groans than I had before when I was younger. And I just feel like that, in my opinion, there's not 90, out, not, there aren't 90 outfielders in Major League Baseball that are better than Josh Reddick. Right. You, you said I, something. I can't, I, can't, I can't cope with that. Yeah, you, you said something. I'm not. I won't disclose exactly what you told me in in text a few weeks ago. But like, the, um, you know, there's is it? It's frust. It's frustrating what you just said, right? Like, there's not 90 guys better than you, um, right. and, and that's what's frustrating, right? And the, is it is it political? Is that the problem, um, or like what what is it? Is is it just the 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 way they the front offices approach the game now? Is is yep. It's it's pretty much the analytical side of things. So they what they do now is they plug in your 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 name and your numbers in the computer, and it projects what you may or may not do for that for that year. And then you go back to there's zero competitive balance in baseball because you got twelve to thirteen teams maybe competing to win, and the other sixteen plus could care less if they win a hundred games or lose a hundred games because they just want to play yeah. their guys because they're twenty one and they're young. And a computer said this could be their projections for their career for the next five years, as opposed to here's Josh Reddick. And yeah, his last five years, he's been a pretty average to a slightly in the average area ball player who's been consistent, but we don't want him because this kid might do something spectacular. Right. But to that, I would say, well, that's what they said about Max Muncie at one point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what they said about Chris Taylor at one point, you know, like the Dodgers are a team now that have what it's one point was, I don't want to call them misfits, but guys that like kind of got thrown off, thrown to the side, Justin Turner, perfect example. I mean, nobody nobody thinks about him being with the Mets and him kind of being an up and down guy and he gets to LA and all of a sudden he's a superstar. Right, right. It's all about the right fit. You give a guy the right fit, he'll perform. Are there teams out there right now that in your eyes are the right fit? 
I'm not sure. I haven't really done too much digging this off season about who plays where right now. Yep. Um, but I mean, if you could pick anything, if you're trying to teach these young kids, like being with Arizona last year, I felt like was a great spot for me because they are so young and I, I know what it takes to win. And I'm, you know, a position player at that point, they had pitchers like Bumgarner who has been the best postseason pitcher ever in baseball's history. Um, who they can learn from that way. And I feel like I could have been a great person to have for their position players for that kind of thing. Like, hey, this guy has been in the playoffs eight out of the last 10 years. Wow, nobody else in baseball has been in the playoffs more than he has in the last decade. Maybe we should learn from that. But no, we'll let him go because we want to play with our young guys and see what they might be able to potentially grow into. Yeah, I think that's what you just said was, I think, very helpful for the Dodgers last year with having Albert. Right. I think he was he was a guy that, you know, obviously he's still got some gas left of the tank. But what he brings to the team and those younger guys and even some of the veterans, you know, and the guys that have been around the oh, game absolutely. longer. Right. It's just it's a it's a it's important. That's that stuff that you can't just teach. You have to have been through it. Right. Absolutely. Yep. You got to You got to You can't just you can't just learn winning. You have to make it happen. I mean, it's just guys that know how to do it and that guy's been you know the best one of the top hitters in baseball over the last 15 20 years so i just don't understand how guys like him can't, can't get a job because people want to go with a guy who's like i said to a guy who's 22 years old and might do this when albert can hit just like these young kids are now hit 200 and probably still hit 25 to 30 homers if he played every day right how about he, took some, me, uh, he, he took me 25 rows deep, so he still got juice in him. <laughs> <laughs> how, how about some, uh, some take this conversation in a little bit of a fun area? Okay. We hear that uh, you're a big WWE fan, and uh, we want to know what made you fall in love with that. That's true. And who also is your favorite wrestler? Okay, so I watched it growing up in the 90s. That was my thing, as most kids were. Um it kind of fell out of it probably around 10, nine or 10 years old. And I didn't get really back into it until I was maybe like 20, 21. I was home for an off season from minor league baseball back in Georgia. And I wasn't living with my parents anymore because that's not cool at 22 years old. So or 21 years old. So I'm not doing that. And the buddy I lived with cable bill and he watched Monday night raw every night. So, I was just hanging out in the living room with him and got kind of sucked into it and got back into it. And as I progressed in baseball, I played with a guy in the fall league in Arizona way back in, I think it was 2008 who knew a camera guy. WWE got his tickets to a show there while we were there. And then we went backstage and I kind of helped him load some stuff into their bus and then hung out for a little while. And he gave me his number. So if you ever want to come to a show, hit me up. And so I have been ever since. And then probably 11, I'm going to answer both questions. So 2011, I'm up in Boston about to have wrist surgery the next morning for a torn ligament in my wrist that I hurt that year. And the camera guy messaged me and says, hey, I see you're in Boston. Are you coming tonight? And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, we're at the garden. So I'm like, okay. Leaves me two tickets. I'm by, by myself and I see where they're at. They're right behind the broadcasters, like ringside. Like, this is weird because I've always said, like, the family section, they call it, which is like camera four, where the wrestlers always look at the camera. That's where the family section is. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, this is weird. I got an empty seat front row, commentators. But I'm like, this is awesome. And he's talking to me during the show, like, yeah, man, when you come backstage after the show, I got something for you. I'm like, okay, cool. So I walk into this private room where there's like four security guards sitting out there. We open the door and Triple H is standing right there. (laughs) Oh, cool. And so then and there, he had heard about me coming up to play music. He's always been my favorite because I always just, I loved his intro music. It was one of the most badass songs that got me fired up and locked in. And he was a top star during his time. He was a, and he was a genius. He's been in what, I think four success, one of the four top four successful factions in wrestling so he's done pretty good for himself but he i met him for about 30 minutes and he gave me his number and said if you ever need tickets anything just let me know so ever since then i've just been messaging him 
That's awesome. awesome. When, whenever you are done with your MLB career, would Josh Reddick ever go over to the WWE? Is this possible, Josh? Hell no, I'm too old for that. <laughs> no? <laughs> You're not getting banged no, I'm up? <laughs> too old for, I'm too old for that. And I'm too small. I'm six foot one of 198 pounds. I'd get demolished. <laughs> And they're on the road oh, more than we are, so I've not, and she wouldn't let me do it if I wanted to. They're on the road more than we are. <laughs> That's good stuff. Really cool. Really cool. What do you got for them? Uh, so I'm wondering uh, if your post-baseball career, right, what what will you do? Are you just going to walk off into the sunset and enjoy life? Are you going to take up golf? Are you? Would you ever be a broadcaster? You know, everybody asked me about if I'd ever have a career in like coaching or broadcasting. I don't think I would go into anything in baseball right out of baseball. Um, I've always told myself that once I was done, I was done. There's no there's no coming back for coaching professionally, which I I still believe. I don't I have any no desire to coach professionally. Um, broadcasting could could raise a, a an eyebrow. That, that would be probably down the line. If, if that was even an option, but I don't, I don't know. After baseball, I'm not sure. We're going to ride off and enjoy these kids and ooh, excuse me, raise these kids and definitely going to golf some more. Um, I miss golfing ever since we've had the boys. We don't golf as much because we both go a lot. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I would start a business or whatnot yet. I don't know. We, we, we've got some time to think about it. You know, with, with, with me being retired, my wife is going to definitely want to go, snowboard more at our cabin up in Colorado. So spend more time up there and freeze my butt off, but she's, she hasn't gone on the, the slopes for a long time. And I also want to know, do you still play Fortnite and, or uh, what, what video game are you on now? Man, I got twin boys. I ain't got time to play video games. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I had time to play video games. Cause I'd be playing one the new Spider-Man movie or video game. Not yep. movie. Um, I played the last two, and those are pretty, pretty awesome. So I figure, on the new PS5, my wife got me the PS5 for Christmas last year. I think I played it four times just because of lack of time and anything to do. But I, I'll get back into it when those boys get older, and um, who knows what will be out here in a few years. But there hasn't been even been a game that I've, I've directed myself to yet. And have they picked up a baseball bat yet? Either of these kids? Absolutely. Yeah. They've been they've been swing they've been working on their swing for probably close to a year now. So the, they we, we, we've we been could, working on it. We could have the future. Uh, what what are we? Maybe the future twenty thirty five. Uh, no, twenty thirty eight. Yeah, twenty thirty eight. Twenty thirty eight. Number one and two one. picks of the draft. Maybe a number one. I don't know about number two. Number two looks more like he might be an astrophysicist or something. Oh really? He's yeah. I've got I've got one that's. That's pretty athletic, and the other one, he's little athletic, but he he would rather go open a book and and do something where he can learn, and then he would like we we try to give him a baseball bat. He hits it once and he drops the bat and goes and picks up something else and plays with a car or a dinosaur or finds a book and he's just he's over it. He's over sports already. Wow, that's interesting, right, Bill? I would think twins just automatically means they're gonna like the same stuff, but maybe I guess not. Yeah. Should have middle infielders, right? Should yeah. Have second baseman. I wonder, uh, also, I want to go back to something you just said, Josh. Now, your wife likes to do outdoor activities in the, in the snow. Have the boys been up there yet? The Colorado? Or are they been? Yeah. Oh, they have. Okay, good. So they know what snow is. Yeah, they know what it is. We took them up there, and we take them up there usually every January to oh, uh, cool. go up there. And so, yeah, they definitely, We she had their snowboards last year. We were there. So we've got pictures of them on their little mini snowboards like this big. Um, wow. But yeah, yeah. She, she's the extreme sports enthusiast. As where I was more, I'm more the traditional sports enthusiast. She does all that crazy stuff. Because she used to do it professionally. She used to be a pro snowboarder. She jumped out of helicopters and oh, wow. traveled wow. all over the world to do all crazy. Yeah, she's, she's psycho, man. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, cool. That's good. Hey, listen, <laughs> that's the last thing I got for you. It's a crazy question. It's based on your uh, Twitter. Uh, are you a big fan of the McRib? <laughs> oh, man, yes. I love a McRib. You know, it's, really? It's funny, see it's funny you bring that up. It's funny you bring that up because two of my five sweaters I have, I have 
it was between this one and my McRib cr Christmas sweater that oh man the, that McDonald's sent me gift package for that tweet. Wow. Okay. Yeah, nice red like Mister Rogers button up, and it's got a little McRib right here. It's it's and it's red, so it's of course my favorite color. Wow. But yes, I love McRib. I'm gonna have season. to. I've never tried the McRib. I'm gonna have to try that. My father actually liked it. So I'm gonna have to dive into the McRib. Uh, how about you there, John? Have you uh, tried the McRib yet? No, sir. No, sir. I'm a oh, plain okay. cheeseburger kind of guy. Oh, you know, okay. I'm a plain quarter but pounder I, I, with cheese guy. I think guy. the McRib is not real. I don't know if it's really rib meat. So it might have kind of burger consistency no. or something. Oh, you know, so. Uh, interesting. Anything get, else, John? Get, get, get extra napkins. <laughs> All <laughs> but right. I don't know if the McRib is now on your lifting program uh, anymore, though, it Josh. Is, oh, yeah. It is, it no. It's not on the diet anymore. No, I'm, I'm straight protein and meat and potatoes, guys. Yeah. So, and you're no, lifting no, no. every day? A few times a week? Uh, five days. Four or yeah. five days a week. Yep. Nice. All right. Well, man, thank you for jumping on with us today. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I am I am hopeful that you will be in a Major League Baseball jersey on opening day. I believe you will. I don't see why not. Uh, you know, you've you've certainly, uh, you know, you've, you've added to every team you've ever been on. I mean, you've been instrumental in their wins. I mean, it's un undisputable. You can't dispute it. I mean, the numbers don't lie. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, this is fun. It's always a good time. Thanks for... Up. Thanks for having. Thanks for having. No. Uh, thanks for coming on. When are you uh, coming really to Vegas? It. Come to Vegas. What are you waiting on? You can do it. Kids graduate probably high school. Oh right. my God! <laughs> <laughs> hey, almost made. I almost. I was a week. I think I was two weeks away from coming there on that when I was with the uh, Reno. Yeah. Triple A ball club. I was two oh, weeks wow. away from coming to Vegas. Yeah. And then I got called up. So. Wow. Cool, cool. Well, happy new year to you and the family. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, you and your family. God bless. Thanks a lot for coming Same. on. Same to y'all. Thanks, man. Thank you. Well, that was cool, man. I, I always like having Josh Reddick on. It's just so interesting to me, the fact that he's got all that money and he just wants to play the game. Like, it says so much, right? Yeah, for the love of the game. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Such a nice guy, very down to earth and uh, cool guy. So, thanks. That was great having him on. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the love of the game, you love betting on the games. And uh, I should remind everybody to download the Crack Wins app. Uh, as we wind out this year, uh, new year coming up. That means football playoffs, Super Bowl, NBA in full swing, baseball's right around the corner. Crack wins is the place yeah, to be. We got uh, we pre appreciate it, man. Listen, uh, it's real simple. I bet my own money on games. I, I pay my taxes on based on sports betting. When, um, like I said, a lot of people, most of them that that are in this industry that I do. Um, I really can't name anyone else that makes a living betting sports and pays tax on sports win. That's what I do. I sell games that I bet. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I know what happens in the long run. I know I beat the sports books. I know I'm thrown out of uh, many of the big brick, brick and mortar uh, major billion dollar operations for one thing and one thing only that's winning. I've been thrown out of thousands of individual bookmakers when I was betting with them for the last 30 years. Um, they don't want people that win. So uh, these are the games you're going to get on crackwins.com and the crack wins app. I'll just tell you that much. There you have it. And, uh, after you download the app, you might want to head over as bill does every single day to WSN.com and, uh, find the best sign up bonuses at all the various sports books all over the country. I was now. just on there. Yeah. I was just on there today. Actually, I was on WSN, not only for the stories, but some new, uh, breaking well, also new breaking stories too. Ohio just passed, passed sports betting old school blue collar towns there uh, Steubenville Youngstown these are all sports betting towns not only the Cincinnati's and the Cleveland's uh, you know this is a big thing for Ohio it's a big thing for sports betting and um, there's some great stories of course on WSN uh, not only on that jurisdiction but the other jurisdictions what's going on the New York sports betting scene for the mobile apps but more importantly, like I was going to say at the beginning, the bonuses. And WSN.com has the most amazing deals they set up with these sports books. Some of them you can only find at WSN. Listen, typical sports book here in New Jersey, you can fund it at the Ocean Casino. Uh, WSN has the $750 link to get $750 free in your account. And yet, if I go to other sites even typical themselves you'd, 
you don't get that bonus. So they do have the bonus on WSN.com. That's not it, though. It's not just New Jersey. It's all across the country, different jurisdictions. You click on the links and the drop-down menus. You can see what's going on there. Really good stuff. Really, um, it's a big part of my game is to get bonuses. So, uh, again, WSN.com, click on the links, click on the jurisdictions, the bonuses, uh, not only the articles. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great resource, and I think everyone should have it. The bonuses really are are a big piece of what can help you be a winning player, right? I mean, you, because it's an advantage you're getting. It's free money. Yes, it is. You, you, you know, you have to you have to deposit money, and uh, based on your deposit, then you get the certain bonuses. But it, it, it definitely is a big part of your overall overall experience and your bankroll. So uh, this is this is actually a good boost and a good head start. Uh, to be on your way to uh, sports betting. So ten uh, again, yeah, check it out. 10 years ago or even five years ago, would you have thought all of these sports books would be popping up all over the country like this? 10 years ago, no. Five years ago, possible, but probably no. I didn't think the DraftKings and the FanDuel's would be into it. They were into fantasy. Right. Uh, but they are into it, and they're the biggest ones in the country, really, are, are DraftKings, FanDuel, um, William Hill, and, and BetMGM, and but, um, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I love to play at them. They're great. But I, I want to make sure I get take advantage of all these bonuses. I want to have as many apps funded as I can, not only for the bonuses, but different lines. So you're going to have some sports books on the WSN.com um, um, site that you're going to find that have different line sets, some of the slower moving sports books. So not only the bonuses, the bonus will be uh, getting – uh, you know, some different lines. And, and that means those extra half a point. So uh, check them out, sign up and uh, go through the links there for the, the greatest and latest bonuses. All right. Well done. So Bill, as we close out 2021 and head into 2022, I, I don't even know how this time goes by so fast. Like I can remember you calling me uh, originally um, and giving me, you know, asking me if I would be interested in this opportunity uh, to be on the show here with you. And that just seems like yesterday. And I don't even know how many shows we've already done together, to be honest. I, I have no idea. We've done a lot. Um, but we've it's so many. I mean, we're going into our, I want to say, our third year of doing this. Yeah, um, yeah we started in 2020. Uh, just amazing. And I can't thank you enough for being letting me be a part of this. And uh, I, I look forward every week to doing this show with you. And I, I'm excited for 2022. Great, John. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you and your family. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be seeing your pop New Year's Eve. So I love it. Happens here. I love it. All right, Wisecracks right. uh, Nation. Uh, happy New Year to all of you, and we will see you in 2022.